next analysis we can do is we can put in a, a, uh, a rigid body motion or a six degree freedom calculation. So I'm going to duplicate this again. We'll call this uh, 6th off. 6 degrees of freedom solver. Same type of analysis. We have geometry connected as well as the solution. Uh, but I'm going to adjust the, the immersed body settings a little bit. Here are the immersed body settings. We have right now speed and direction. I can ch change this to a general rigid body motion. We have to specify mass. Let's say this is um, 100 grams. And the uh, moment of inertia, I'm just, I will just set one for all of these. We can adjust this later. What's interesting here is I can specify degrees, translational degrees of freedom. So I'm going to free up only the y axis and not allow this to rotate. And add gravity as well, which means the mass will become important. We can define multiple forces and torques. So, for example, we can define a spring force. Okay. And this spring force could be a spring, and you can specify the equilibrium position and a linear spring constant. Or we can assign a value. So, I can say value of this. Uh, the value of the force can be a constant or an equation, and I can define multiple forces. So I can, for example, define a stopping force, and I can create an expression such that when the stopper, when the spring, when the valve comes down far enough, it stops it. I have a large increase in force to stop it from going further. I can create, for example, a magnetic force. So if I have a solid one driving this, I can specify a stroke value. So all those things are op optional. Here we can say we have no forces in the x and z direction. And here we have, let's say, a minus 10 Newton force. Actually, I think uh, when we fully seal it, it's about 14 newtons. So why don't we put in a 14 newtons of force here? Okay, so it's like we have a constant force pushing down at 14 newtons, and in this case, the force of the spring will balance out the the fluid hydrodynamic pressure on on the valve to find an equilibrium position. Uh, we may need to have smaller time steps here, uh, depending on how much, of the, how big the force is. But let's go ahead and run the simulation and see how it works. Before I do that, I'm going to save it. So I will save it in my immersed boundary examples. Okay, the simulation is completed. Let's take a look at the results. That's the final result. Let's take a animate this and see. Oh no, I think I ran this as a. Let me double check here. Is this the right one? This is. So, output control. Oh, I am saving transient results. So, it means we can't 
edit this. Huh. See what happened here. So the very first time step looks like this. Okay, so we're going down. After a tenth of a second, it's pretty much down here, and let's see if it bounces up. And then the rest just kind of maintains the, the small gap flow, maybe a little bit of vibration up and down. So this shows you the ability to do these type of analysis. There we go. All right, we won't see anything different is because after about uh, 76 steps here, it just stays the same. It reaches a position and it's, it stays because the fluid dynamic forces and the spring force balance out. All right, so that's a few examples of how we can use immersed body modeling to model moving valves. We can certainly move the valve as it goes up and down through remeshing, through mesh stretching. Uh, in fact, CFX has the ability to do remeshing. If we open up this and you can see we, we have the option to spe specify mesh deformations. Fluent has additional uh, mesh deformation and remeshing capabilities. So we can support a wide range of motion analysis, but by far the easiest, although it's the least accurate way to do this is using the immerse boundary method. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and uh, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.